have to introduce who I am, okay? So save time. Today we talk about Toyma. Toyma means force the horse. So before I talk about Toyma, let me explain what is Ma. Ma in Chinese is a horse. How come we use horse, the animal, for our stand? We believe the horse has four legs. He stand there kind of stable, very strong, balanced well, but not the other animals. The other animals, like cat, like dog, running around, sometimes here, sometimes there, but the horse, most of the time, even sleeping, believe me, the horse just stand there sleep. So, very strong, they have a good stand for animal. That's why, as a Kung Fu guy, we admire the horse stand. So, we wish our stand as strong, as balanced well as a horse. <coughs> then, how we change our stand into a horse stand? We have two legs only. <laughs> We're not going to use the hands <laughs> and legs and make it like, <laughs> look like a horse. So, there's a way. If you sit on a horse, so you got four legs, you agree? But you sit on the leg, I mean sit on the horse. Yourself <coughs> and horse, two things. Horse leg belongs to the horse. Yourself have two legs there, but not drawn together. That's why we have to sit on the horse. That meaning of sit on the horse, you have to ride on the horse like, like have a certain way to ride on it. Not just like me, sit on a chair. You sit on the horse. See, animals, funny. See, our legs, just good for horse. See, no, like this way. So because the horse is around here. So you sit on the horse, you have to like surround the body of the horse. And you, you sit like this, you will fail. Very easy to fail. So you have to make your hip Join your leg and have energy, like grab it. If you sit like relax like myself now, sit on the chair, you fail. You never could sit on a horse. So you have to like grab it, use the energy. See? And you have to do it right. If you do it wrong, the horse gets the message. And you're running around or bounce you onto the wall, believe me. So you know how to ride on a horse or not. The horse itself could tell you know how to ride horse, or you are the first time ride horse. You've been ride a lot of horses. The horse itself, he know. So you have to know. Now we talk about how to sit on a horse. For our kung fu, our system, we have a easy kim yong ma. That is the way. That's the right way. We sit on a horse. Look at those jokers ride on a horse. They never sit on a horse. They never, never <laughs> sit like comfortable like this. <laughs> Cannot. They go like easy kim yong ma, like this. The horse bed is here. And they go like this. See? So this is the horse. Easy kim yong ma. Sit on the horse. So the jokers make themselves have four legs to run. Not two, not, not, they sit there and let the horse go. That's two things. Yourself, you're the rider and the, the horse. Two he make, make sure the horse body belong to him, connect together, like have four legs run. So easy, Kim Yong Ma. Also, if you Stand like this way. 
You not sit on the horse. You sit on the horse like this. One piece. Your body and your legs together. So now you agree. I'm sitting on a horse. Yeah. So I got four legs. That's how how strong and how much balance I got. Four legs here. That's why. Always tell you guys doing chi sao, play kung fu forms, you have to sit on the horse. But before today, hopefully you don't understand what is sit on the horse. Yeah, hey, Sifu always tell me sit on the horse. So that is why you have to make your body and your legs become one piece. So now you know Yi Ji Kim Yong Ma. Liu Li carry the wood Ma. Ma is a horse. So that's why we relate to the horse. Now you understand why we call a stand horse. That's why, okay? So now, how to train us? We, we are not standing there forever. Play form, just like that. We Kung Fu, I mean Wing Chun Kung Fu, sometimes we need move forward. Move the side way, this way, that way. But very seldom. Sometimes we do better a little bit. Let's say if you, uh, for some reason, your hand jam like this. So you have to better a little bit, make it not jam, like reasonable. See? Sometimes we punch by bet your body, go better and punch, make it like not jam. Yeah. So if you don't have enough space and you punch like this, so kind of choke you, we call it choke you, choke you, your arm jam. So you have to, but this like very, very seldom, not too many chances like that. See, but sometimes, but, but most of the time, we train ourselves, the horse go forward, forward. Why we need to go forward? Because we need the Chong Chi. Everybody know what's Chong Chi? Chong Chi is the energy, the force, go toward in front. That's Chong Chi. So if you don't, your horse don't go forward, you never have Chong Chi. See? So how to go forward like this? I'm not sitting on a horse. I have to sit on a horse like this. Sit on the horse. So make believe the <laughs> the horse go forward instead of your human being go forward. If you walk like this, boy, boy, <laughs> go forward. Not the horse go forward. So you have to make sure you sit on the horse that you don't call me boy. You call me <laughs> not a horse either. But Moya sit on horse. Moya sit on horse. That's Moya sit on horse. So really strong and balanced spell. You agree? Agree. Okay. So now we talk about how to go this way and that way and forward still balance. So that's why we have Cham Kyo. We have Biu Ji Dong train us to about the horse. So three forms. Siu Lim Tao, just sit on the horse. And you do the whole form. Cham Kyu is the form chin us moving around. And good balance. Like you sit on the horse plus you you could moving around. So Biu Ji Train the hands, go back to the center line as soon as possible. And the horse don't move that much. So the grand grandmasters, they invent, organize all the movement into forms, this for this, this for that. So you need three forms together for the system. You can learn certain things 
out from the free, then you call Wing Chun or whatever. Got to be all together. Okay? So now we talk about uh, how go forward. Then I come up with uh, very, really funny story. That's why I keep laughing. <laughs> because I, I can't wait really to tell you. Long ago, happened in Hong Kong. All of a sudden, come in a guy. He said, I learned Wing Chun. Many, many years. Very good. <laughs> then I said, You're really good. Okay. Then I make, hey, you go cheese out with him. So, uh, boom, 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 cheese out. Then I sit there. Then uh, I'm very much, uh, what you call, excited, you know. Hey, do this way, that way. But I can't tell my students what to do. So I said, Okay. <laughs> Let me cheese out with you. <laughs> so his horse is funny. He stand like this way. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> the common sense telling me if you push him this way, sideways, he will fail, right? <laughs> so I, I tell try to tell the student to make him go like like, like. Like, like this way, and he, he gonna fail, you know? So, but I can't tell my students, I said, let me <laughs> go. So I just, <laughs> ending up, <laughs> myself <laughs> fell there. You know why? Because I just with him, he go like this. Yeah. So I teach him with this, you teach me, all right? See, so like this. I want to step here. <laughs> Go for Soon, soon I step here, myself. <laughs> <laughs> myself like this. You understand what I mean? So he stand like this way, okay? Because he's been trained that way for many, many years. So he can use this. How? He go like this. <laughs> See? So same way like I stand this way and I twist like this way, right? But he start with this way. So he could do this. <laughs> Easy came your mind. You understand what I mean? Oh. See? So he he could do this. I don't know that. So I just believe you stand this way no good, you know? So I do this, you fail. So I stand Yiji him your ma and do to him. <laughs> first time in my life. First time stand this way. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> the horse. But if I remember this, I left. Oh, this is terrible. Everybody look at me. I'm the see who the kid. Come on, make me feel. Uh, I don't. I don't know how to explain to all my students. So they say, your parents, tell us when you look at something, you really have to understand. Don't go directly, <laughs> Wing Chun way. Oh, this way right, and you do it. You might get in trouble. Okay. So you have to understand where this come from. I'm not saying this thing is right. No. But he do it opposite way. I didn't notice. Because this, he need balance. He could do that and step back. So that's fooling you. Now, let's say like this. The old days, Minjin guy fought with the other style. You play this, really powerful. Wing Chun guy play this. Before the Kung Fu fighting, mm. they saw the, the forms. So like this, hey, you don't have to, so like, go. Uh, let's fight, you know. So that's the same way, same way. I look at the kid like this, I say, eh, let me go and uh, make you feel. <laughs> and and uh, myself feel. Mm. So don't do this mistake anymore. So same way. Like Wing Chun, Yiji Kim Yong Ma looks like stupid, like this. See, how could you fight with this? 
but we could turn like this, this, forward, you know, very good, see? So, before you understand the horse of Yiji Kim Yong Ma, you really don't, don't look at it good or don't give too much uh, credit for that kind of stand. But that's the best stand. And the guy stand this way. Also, when your Yiji Kim Yong Ma turn, look like that. So I saw you already. See? I go this way. Same. But he's like this. I'm here. Even worse. Because I'm facing him and my horse is like this. <laughs> exactly. He used a little energy. Then I fell. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. See, if you energy come this direction, I fell. So I want to step here to get him. So I forgot myself. I stand his stand already. Mm -hmm. So like this, like that. So easy to fail. Either way, I fell. So that is reasonable, see? Not because uh, my Kung Fu no good or uh, no luck. <laughs> Actually, the same, okay? So about this, we go back to Toi Ma. Toi Ma, wood to wood, translate from Chinese is to push the horse, force the horse. See, by what? By holding your hand, go this way, that way? No. By techniques. We train your horse, not uh, only uh, do this way, that way. That's the other style of Kung Fu. We train Kung Fu, we do Qi Sao, and also train your horse. So that's why we Qi Sao with techniques. Techniques have all the nature, all the rules. You cannot break it. Let's say, bong sao, nature, not allowed to stay. Soon you do bong sao, you have to change it in the other hand. But not necessarily, tan sao. You could change it into fuk sao, other hand. Or bong sao, uh, come back here and go. You could do, change it into any hand you feel comfortable. So use those loop for Qi Sao. So Qi Sao, and you obey all the rules. So sometimes, because the nature of the movement, you have to do certain things. You have to step back, sideways, this way, that way. So, and we use techniques to make you horse moving around. So after a while you train yourself, you could do this way, you could do that way, then you are free to have a stand. I mean, sit on the horse, plus you could move like exactly what you need by itself. You don't have to tell your foot or your leg what, where to go. That's why we have chi girl. Uh, very simple like that. Don't look at it simple. This is very good. So you're feeling a little bit different, that dilation, this dilation, and make all the difference. I mean, how to balance your body. So that's why. Toyma is use techniques to make you go certain way, certain direction, and still balance your body good and match with your techniques. Like example, like before I said, I want to step this side. So could push him this side, so he fell. But you have to like step this side. You have to change this, doing whatever, and balance well. Uh, in other words, you just step here, then go. You forget that moment. You almost like a little bit on the floor, like easy to fail yourself, no good. So you have to, if you step there, and th this one have to move to make it balance well. Don't have to report here and tell where to go, how. Don't have to. 
That's why you have to make your hands do something instantly. Also, flex. So, we use techniques to make you moving around. So, uh, this I mentioned before, do chi sao, always si heng do some. And the si the eyes, just let the si heng, obey the si heng, whatever, uh, don't fight bad, don't try to against, yeah. So, uh, si heng you some technique to make you move. You don't, even you fail or whatever, you, you stop and you just don't cooperate with him, no good. So, and you, you cannot be too mad by your seeing. So you have to obey the rules. If you jam like this, you cannot put your hands out. You better, your body back, make it balance. This part, you understand? In case you need your hand not jam, you not do this way, because you see there like chisa with you, have technique there. You cannot afford to go like this. Then you have to go backward. The reason backward is to make your hand in the right position, not like this. So that's why you have to go backward, 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 this way, that way, that way. And we have some techniques to make you go this way or make you go that way. So your horse is going different direction. Bad word, this way, that way. That's how we call it, Tui Ma. Tui Ma is not holding your hands, go this way, that way. I use techniques to fire you this way, that way. Sometimes it's jump. Sometimes this way, sometimes time. Some, I mean, all the kind of techniques to make you go all around. And plus, and use the techniques on you, onto you, like fight this way, that way, that way, that way, see? I mean, what kind of technique? I don't have to give you the detail or how, you know? From Chi Sao, you could figure it out, like make, you see that I go the direction, this direction, and non-stop. Not just go there and stop. You use all techniques to force him, go this way, that way, that way, that way. So, and after, uh, a short period, and you see the eye stand better, balance better. That that is the nature of Tui Ma. Tui Ma is between stand there and go forward, moving your horse in between Tui Ma. See, so we need that. That is very important to join before you, you don't know how to go move your horse. And you start to know how to do the horse in between. That's why we need that Tui Ma. Because you have to balance your body. Plus you have to moving around. And then, if you don't training your horse how to, and you soon you stand on one foot for the short period, if you have some force come to you, you fail, you are unbalanced. That's no good. That's why we need the Tui Ma. Very, very important. See? And if you're a wise guy, you try to avoid that. Oh, I, I just uh, don't do Tui Ma. I just directly do some uh, step forward. And then you have no foundation. You, you don't have Tui Ma, the program or the training. Then you can balance your body. If you not balance your body, you can use your Kung Fu. In other words, you can use the Kung Fu to protect yourself. So, become no use, cannot use your Kung Fu. That's why <coughs> Tui Ma is very important section in Wing Chun system. Questions? So that's it. Again, any questions? So Tui Ma, you have to do it with Si Heng or Si Fu. Tui Ma cannot uh, do it to, uh, I mean, two beginners.
cannot do it. So you really need a uh, Xi or Sifu, know all the techniques. So he could use you, I mean, use techniques to force you moving around. This part must be clear. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, well, before we end, uh, why, why don't we uh, before we end, why don't we just talk a little bit about uh, how many people in the room here are actually doing tuima huh? or are capable of doing tuima? Uh, probably about ten or so. Yeah. <coughs> when you in doing tuima, what are some of the observations that you all have had? What I'm trying to do is open this up for a discussion. Let's talk a little bit about some of the learnings, some of the frustrations that we have around understanding horse, toy ma, forward energy, those kind of things. Okay? But we need participation. Hmm? No one to Tim? go in. No one to go in when your balance is good. No you one can go in, or when you even have the center to know when to go in. Yeah. Okay. Knowing when to go in. Right. Okay. Alignment. Alignment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just capture a, a few of the thoughts okay, as we're doing this. Set alignment. Right. Having the right balance. <coughs> Correct balance. <coughs> okay. okay. Let's uh, try to express it in a way that kind of uh, addresses maybe a, a question okay, that you might have around uh, some frustration you might have had. Yes around some key learnings that you might have had that helped you make maybe a step improvement in your Kung Fu. Not being so eager to go in as well. Okay. Actually, okay, please continue. Um, Just to get over the, it took a while to relax so that you would uh, not fight back. I mean, uh, I found that my time improved when I stopped focusing on trying to resist what the sea mm -hmm. hang was doing. When I understood that it's uh, as the sea dad, it's my part in the exercise to be allowed to be pushed back, and that I'm working on trying to develop the the balance and the coordination between uh, keeping my hand, my structure, and moving my legs. <coughs> Structure. Going, yeah. well, like the first time when I started doing it, I was if the seeing would throw a punch or something, I was like trying hard to to resist or to stop it. Okay, to be natural about your movement as opposed to being steady and rigid. Okay. Are we okay on time here? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, John, yeah. come help me for a moment. Sure. Okay? You be my scribe. Okay. And write down some of the thoughts as we collect it. We're going to take a few more thoughts and then we're going to take a look at what's on that tablet there and then we're going to discuss it for about a few minutes. Okay? <coughs> Go ahead. Please. Would, uh, Comments. Really helpful to focus on sitting on the, on the horse and facing and, and making sure that those two components are, are, are there all the time because you can't you can move somebody if you're not facing and sitting on the horse at the same time and if you are then you will be balanced. 
Sitting on the horse, balance facing, facing at the same time. It, it, because yeah. I had a, I, I used to get very frustrated when I tried to move into somebody and go off to the side. Yes. And because I wasn't sitting on my horse, or I wasn't fully facing them at the same at the same time. Okay. Well, when you're moving it too, <clears throat> it's important to have your feet to go straight and not go into the center. You put your foot into the center as you try to go in, because the other person just. Yes. Push you right off to the side as well. Positioning. Yes. I guess alignment that would be right. <coughs> okay. Aligning alignment of what? I guess your what are you aligning? What's going in? Go in, you going in. Okay. Because a few times when I when I was trying to move in, I put my foot into the center okay. and the singing just took me and just pushed me off to the side because my yeah. hands went, you know, past my center as well. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll discuss a little bit about alignment. Okay. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Any other observations or comments that any, anyone here has around their experiences? Okay. Now I'm sure you all have, have had a lot of experiences. Okay. Some good, maybe some not, but uh, nonetheless, they're all learning experiences. Okay. And of course, you know the structure that we're talking about in terms of Tuima is related to something we call Tizo. Uh, we're not really talking outside of that boundary. <coughs> we're talking about qi sao and how tui ma relates to qi sao. Okay, as, as one of the phases of learning and training we go through. Okay? And somehow, you know, uh, tui ma can be done at many different levels. But you're introduced it, to it in a very early stage of your training as you learn chum Q. Okay? And, and it's quite appropriate because chum Q has, deals with balance, okay? And the ma has to do with balance, okay? So, are we, are we pretty much, uh, anything else? Okay, if not, let's, let's, let's take a look at this list for, for a moment. Thank you, John. Okay, so, you know, here we have, you know, a key word, okay, such as balance, right? This is key, okay? Alignment, okay? And, uh, okay, all the key words, okay, that you, that you find in Wing Chun that makes for good Wing Chun, okay? So let's just kind of talk about that, okay? Of course, facing, that's important, okay? All right. So, Again, what you see is the, the things that you all relate to or happens to be the very fundamentals okay, of what is good Gong Fu, regardless of whether it's Wing Chun or not. Right? It's, this is applicable to any martial art. Right? It, I mean, everyone needs to be aligned and balanced and relaxed you know, and, and face okay, in the right direction. Okay. They have their attention brought to the right direction. Okay. So, it, so it's not unique to Wing Chun. Okay. And that's indeed where the, you know, the power of what we teach in Wing Chun is, is that we get at the underlying critical variables or martial arts variables. Okay. Uh, and these are all attributes. <coughs> and these are things, these are the fundamentals of what makes our Kung Fu work or not work. So when you talk about these particular things, okay, you have to kind of look and say, well, what else is missing? Okay, I, I see words, but there are other words on here that also get at something that's very fundamental. What, okay, who said this? Know when to go in. Is that Tim? Yes. Okay, Tim. Well, what is your sense about when you said know when to go in? What did you mean by that? Because my experience, a few times, I was too eager to go in. Yeah. And then some, most sometimes when I went in, either my balance wasn't there, my footing wasn't okay. right, or my line wasn't right. Okay. And the singing just right. took advantage of that. So what? What is? What is another? A better word? Timing. T timing is a good is a good word. Okay. That's not exactly what I was thinking of, but certainly timing. Yes. 
Patience. Pardon? Patience. <laughs> patience. <laughs> yes, patience. Uh, yeah, we all need. Well, no need one. No one to yeah. have the center line to go in. Why are we doing chisa? What is the main? One of the main reasons why we do chisa? Sensitivity. Sensitivity. Okay. Very good. Okay. So, when when you said that, I kind of related that to sensitivity. So if you so if you have sensitivity, you, you to, let, let's talk about it. what what does sensitivity mean to you all? Okay, sensitivity to what? Another individual's energy. Right. Other individuals' energy. Right. <coughs> well said. But what else? The direction of the energy or the lack of energy. The direction or lack of. Okay. Good. Okay. What else? To where the center, where the, whether there's something in the center or not. Whether there's something in the center or not. Okay. Okay. John said, the sensitivity of what, where the other guy's energy is or what it's doing. How, what about? How much of it is there? Okay. How, how much, much of it is? is how much? Okay. Look at the picture now. Okay, there's you, and there's somebody else. Okay, so I'm going to feel where his energy is. What's the missing part of the picture? He's got to feel my energy. Yeah, and and, and who else has to feel your energy? I you do too. You you know, I'm, I'm trying to okay. control how much I'm putting into the Exactly. Play. So not, not only do you have to feel your energy, your partner's energy, you have to feel your own. you got to feel how you're connected with the other person. If you don't feel that, and if you do chi so, and you try to do toy ma without feeling your energy and the other person's energy and uh, how it completes the picture, because you're talking about up here, right? you're, not, you're not doing that exercise by yourself. He's not doing it by himself, you're doing it together. Okay, so you're talking you about being a, one, right? a period activity, exactly. You're talking about an event. You, that happens because you both are part of it. So you have to include him and, he, and, and yourself. And he needs to, of course, include you. But from your point of view, you know, there's got to be inclusion of the other person in what you do. Okay? Not because I want to move to this side. Okay? But my moving to this side is dependent on what he did. It's depending on what feedback I get from him, from that other person. So as your Seagull was describing before, you know, with, uh, you know, I guess some fond memories, you know, okay, of uh, what he considered a joke on himself, <laughs> when he was playing with somebody, he had pre, he said he had preconceived notions about of the horse, and what, and where the fallacies and where the weaknesses of the horse are. And yeah, and, and of course, any of these movements are valid, of course. You can, why are they valid? They're only valid because you know, if the other person really doesn't feel or know what you're doing, right? If he knows and sees and feels what you're doing, then you're not likely to be able to do it. Okay, so this has to do with sensitivity. So I'm kind of, I'm trying to, every time you get it, put your hands against somebody else's, and you're doing this exercise you know, called chi sao and tui ma, you're trying to feel and sense what does he know about me? What do I know about him? Okay. Okay, so one very fundamental thing. Never forget that when you're doing chi so, it's not something that you're doing independent of the other person. Okay. And you're not doing techniques, you're not doing any of those techniques that you do do, okay. it has to be with the cooperation of the other person. Okay. Sometimes they may or may not cooperate, but you must include them. You must get them to, to follow movements. You must follow their movements. Right? You must follow them because you need to know where they, wh what they want to do. Yeah, if you don't know what they want to do, you know, how do you know what you should do? <laughs> okay? So when you're talking about something like toy ma, it's very relevant. What, what, what are you doing to make people off balance? When you make someone off balance, what, what does that 
equate to? You are opening. What? Create. You are. Yeah, it yeah, can create openings. But you teach them how to get back to the balance or to. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? I'll take them on the horse. Pardon? You're taking them off the horse. Oh, yeah, you're them. basically uprooting them, right? Or balancing them. Okay. Uprooting. You, right, right, right. Oh. Uh, you take a, you know, a, a sack of potatoes, right, and you put it on the floor, 100 pounds. Well, it's hard to uproot that until, unless you lift the darn thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really push it and move it very far, no. okay? Because it's not really cooperating with you. What if, what if, what it's cooperating with is what? It has no choice. It's gravity. Right. Gravity is, if you're off balance, gravity will just suck you right down to the ground. You've got no choice. That's a physical law, right? A little bit off balance, boom, right? You fall because of gravity. Okay, so toy ma, okay, if you don't have the sense of where the other person is, where his center of gravity is, okay, how can you understand how to uproot him? Or how do you understand how to maintain your own rootedness to the ground? Okay, if you relax, and all of you should have experienced this, I'm sure, when you do siudim tal, when you stand in yi in your ma like this, now, your legs speak or intention as a result of that, and in the beginning it is, okay? It, this is not a, a very, a matter of fact, easy horse to stand in in the beginning. As your muscles get accustomed to it, okay, then it becomes more natural. But as it becomes more, more natural, you still have to pay attention to it. You still have to say, let's relax those legs. And why do you want to relax them? So that your body can sink into the ground, okay? You're not, and you, you're not fighting gravity. You're not trying to, if you tense your legs, you do it for no, no good reason. All you're doing is, all you're doing is fighting gravity, okay? What you want to do is go with gravity and let your body sink. And then as you can do that, you'll feel yeah, a sense of rootedness. <clears throat> so, going back to Toy Ma, okay, someone wants to uproot you. Nine times out of ten, or even ten times out of ten, the reason you can be uprooted so readily and easily okay, is because you're doing it pretty much to yourself. You're pushing off the ground. Right? As you push off the ground, the other guy helps you. Okay, you want to go off the ground? I just help you off the ground. I just follow your move. Well, how can I do that unless I had that sensitivity to feel, ah, he's rising. His energy is rising. Okay? So in Toy Ma, very, very important thing to remember is that we have to get at feeling and being sensitive to what the other person's doing with his energy. How is he resisting you to you? He's resisting you through the ground. Okay? Through the ground. That's 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 where his resistance point is. Okay? Without the ground, he couldn't resist you. The legs up in the air, he can't resist you very well. Okay, he's only he's using the ground as a brace. Okay. And if he presses down on you, okay, it's kind of easy if, if you allow the energy to go into your legs. Okay, then you can actually he help. If someone push presses down on you when you do chi sao and do toy ma, and this happens quite frequently from my experience, is that when when there's a lot of forward energy and someone's trying to push you around. What they're doing is they're putting the weight on you. I'm not saying that that's the best way, okay? But certainly that's what you ought to have felt. Many of you, oh, a lot of energy on my arms, yeah. and your shoulders start to get tired, and you know, you get it, and then you all start getting sloppy. Okay. But the I, but the idea is that as that happens, and if you use your arms okay, to resist the energy and, and the body weight that the other one put, the other person puts on you. Then you begin to use upper body strength. If, and what you need to do is take all, take that weight and that energy, and kind of channel it and focus it down here. And that's why we say ma is so important because toy ma means that I'm pushing, I'm using my horse to push your horse. Okay. Essentially, I'm not using my hands very much. I do techniques, true, but the techniques are almost like a secondary issue. Because once you disturb somebody's balance, 
what becomes easy to do. Almost anything, huh? technique wise. If someone is not well balanced and that's well centered, you can feel it. And if you can't feel it, if you feel that, heck, you know, there isn't many techniques that you couldn't do. Okay? So in Toy Ma, we're talking about how we uproot, how we disrupt somebody's balance, and how we maintain our own balance in a dynamic sense, in a static sense. Okay, so you, you, need to, you need to actually pay a lot of attention on sensitivity. And that doesn't mean, I think it gets back to someone's point here. It says, well, you're relaxing and you gotta yield a little bit because you, know, you felt that you, if you put too much resistance, it, it might be your sihing, you put a lot of resistance, you sometimes may be able to put some barriers up and he can't push you very well, but you know darn well that all, every muscle okay, in, your, in your upper body is stiff and tense, okay? And as a result of, a result of that, you can't follow and you can't feel and your body won't be able to yield okay, to the pressure that's being applied to you, okay? So you, you, you almost have to say, okay, let's see what happens. If you let someone push your horse, let him push your horse, the horse. Okay. Not the upper body. Let him push the whole horse. Let him move it. And see, and allow and feel, get a sense of what that feels like when someone actually does push your horse. And how you maintain balance as he pushes your horse. But you can't move too soon, right? In Wing Chun, we don't do a whole lot of yielding per se. The concept of yielding is, is not something in the forefront of what we do, okay? But it's there. It's very important. And okay? we don't talk about it a lot but it's actually a, a very integral part of Toi Ma because how, the only way I can stay relaxed okay, it, is to actually flow. Okay? If you take a step forward and I, st and I stand there and don't move, what happens? You're going to get jammed okay. up. Yeah. 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 Example, right? Yeah. Uh, why, why don't you both? Come, two guys. <coughs> let's let's, uh, let's talk about it for a couple of minutes, okay? And you let me know uh, when I'm running low on time, okay? Timekeeper. Okay, do step forward and uh, do Dean Jung for a second, okay? Sam will do Dean Jung to Glenn, okay? Okay, okay, Just, okay. So you kind of saw what happened here. Just as Sam was stepping forward. Glenn decided to stay where he was until he was pushed. Right? Then he had no choice. Then, then what happened? You were off balance. Off balance right? Okay. At that, at the moment you're off balance, you're looking for a, a new balance point like that. Okay. But if you if you did not take a step back, what would have happened to you? Okay. Push you, back. <laughs> you would have what? Fall. Fallen. Fall. Exactly. Would went boom. Okay. Okay. The only. Uh, the only other, there are other solutions, but certainly the idea is that if someone takes a step forward, okay, you have to either stop him from coming forward, or you're going to have to follow him, okay? Otherwise, you're going to fall on the ground. Okay, so you, you almost kind of, it's almost like dancing in that sense. So in Toy Ma, as you initiate the, the energy going forward, okay, he, he, he ought to feel, okay, but. You never, never want to lose this compression. Okay, you you, you see that you, you had pressure, right? Like, and, and it was right here by your wrist. Okay, as you were pushing him, how did he know you were pushing him? Because he felt it right there. And he felt it right here. Okay, so his whole body was compressing against yours. Now, if you stayed there, held your ground, and didn't move, and he stepped forward, what would happen? He would basically you had to almost stiffen up your body. Did you feel your whole body? Yes. Okay. Your whole upper body stiffen up, more like this. Right? It's a natural, it's a natural reflex. Okay, because I'm preserving my balance. I'm gonna st if I stay here to resist you in terms of your movement, I gotta do this. Okay, if I y if, if you yield to him and just follow his movement, but keep the compression. Okay, you're gonna still end up where you started from, right? No, no more and no less. Okay. You don't run away, but you're using his energy, to, and he's you're taking his energy to move you, and you're allowing him to move you, okay? And you're maintaining that distance, okay?
okay? But no more and no less. So in turn, we don't tend to just run away. We, stay, we tend to stay right in there with you, preserving that distance. Okay, so in Toi Ma, what's very essential, I guess, when you touched his hands, you felt, ah, here's some resistance. And here, and then you get, you get a sense of what? What you have to do to move him, right? And what are you looking for? What, what do you look for when, when you feel that, once you feel that resistance, that's more compression than what you normally have felt. I mean, you, you, you're gonna see, as you, as you both touched hands, touched hands like this, okay, you feel compression right here, right? That's what we call, in Wing Chun, Chong Chi, okay, some forward energy. And that's why your hands stick so well, <coughs> because of that forward energy. Without it, the hands don't really stick. They just flop about, okay. Right. So, but with that compression, okay, you, you said, oh, okay, here's some compression. Now we really are sticking. Now the guy comes at you with forward energy, what happens? <coughs> you, felt, you felt more compression right. than normal, right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so your objective is to keep the compression the same. Right. Okay. He's applying more compression, and your objective then is to, hey, let me maintain this compression. Where do I have to move? How do I have to move to maintain this compression? Okay. So that I don't have to tighten up all of this okay. to stop you. So now I can now take what you're doing and kind of let it into my legs. And what are you looking for when you do that? When you, when you open? When you over compress him, let's say, when you want to move him, what are you, what are you looking for? In your city, you're looking for, in order to move, you're looking for a... I'm looking for a line. Yeah, a line. Yeah, I get right. there. I'm looking, I'm, 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 wanna, I'm looking you're for looking, a You're line. looking for a leverage point, right? Yeah, I'm looking for, for a way to get, <laughs> to get underneath him. Yeah, and exactly. You're looking up, for a leverage point. Him. You're looking how to lever him off the floor, right? right. Because it, without lifting, it's very hard to move that sack of potatoes that way, right? So you almost got to lift it a little bit, okay? So you, once you felt, ah, here's the resistance, boom. Okay, now you start to look for, well, how can I lever this? Where can I get it? And how, could I, and how can you actually get that lever? How, why does that lever work? It works because he stiffened up his body, hmm. right? He stiffened up his body, he became right, rigid. As a rigid body, it's easy to apply rigid bodies, okay? If you try to apply something that's pliable, you know, like a, a water balloon, kind of tough because it kind of yields. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, but the idea is that in Toyma, you're looking to how to. Live.